I'm Shannon Sylvain. And on March 30th, 2016, I was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer. In February of this year, 2016, I went to the doctor's office because I had a sinus infection. And I went to see my doctor because I wanted to get some medicine, clear it up real fast, I wanted to be in and out. So I went to my doctor and we got into our normal conversation. And as I was getting ready to leave the doctor's office, she asked me if there was anything else that was going on. Did I need a B12 shot? And I told her that everything was fine. However, every now and again, I would see blood in my stool. So when I told her that, she looked at me in this expression of alarmed face. Uh, because I had never told her that before. And she said, you know, how long has this been going on? What do you mean you see blood in your stool? And I said, well, I saw a doctor several years ago and she told me that when you have blood in your stool, it was directly related to, usually it was directly related to having a poor diet. To which my current doctor said that is not the case and I needed to, uh, be treated for that. I got in to see this uh, specialist, this GI doctor that she wanted me to specifically see. And I remember walking into the office and thinking this is a whole lot like for something that I think is just related to diet and now it's becoming a thing. Um, I went in to see this new person who might never met before. Uh, she did this quick check to see if I had hemorrhoids and told me immediately that I did not have hemorrhoids. The best way to find out exactly what was going on with me internally was to do a colonoscopy. The next day, I remember being home with my husband. We were there all day and waiting to see if we were gonna get a call and something inside just told me that I should answer the phone. So I did and it was my doctor and she asked me where I was and I told her I was at home and she said, good, I'm glad you're not driving. And I remember thinking, okay. And she told me that she got the results back and that we needed to talk about them. And my heart sank because I knew that it couldn't be anything great because she told me that Told me that if everything was fine, that she'd call me back after she got back from spring break. But she was calling me the next day and she told me that I had rectal colon cancer. Um, I hung up the phone with her and I waited a little bit before I ended up telling my husband. I, I was still trying to piece together what exactly she just told me. On April 20th, 2016, I had my first surgery for rectal colon cancer. I had about two feet of my colon, maybe a little bit more than that, removed. Then I was instructed by my oncologist who was doing my radiation that after radiation was over, which was six weeks, every day for six weeks, once that process was over, I would need to start chemo for six months. And chemo, the type of chemo that I needed to have was so aggressive that it would behoove me to get a port put in so that I wouldn't have to have an IV chemo every time in my arm. Basically, when you, the chemo is so strong that if you do that in your vein every time, it could collapse your veins. So a lot of people that do chemotherapy have a port put in so that um, they can just access the port and it goes directly into your system. I have a port, this is my port right here. It was a lot, essentially they had to cut here and 
um, place the port in, slide it down, and, and it lands right here. And so every time I do chemo or have blood drawn or basically anything with a syringe, they can do it. They can access it through through this so that I don't have to be pricked. I did a lot of research uh, during my time of healing. After my four surgeries, I was at home. Um, I had to, I couldn't work because my body was still healing. So I had a lot of time to do a lot of research. And the main thing that kept popping up was health and healthy living after your your surgeries and your tumor is removed and you're now in the fighting phase, meaning radiation and chemotherapy and whatever other treatments that you have to do. And a part of living your healthiest life includes eliminating sugar from your diet. Sugar feeds cancer. And they may never tell you this in the doctor's office or, or at the hospital, but hear me when I tell you, here's your cancer, here's its food, it's called sugar, it feeds it. So I am no medical doctor, I am not here with a degree or any books, I'm just telling you, sugar, research it. Research it for your own sake, but sugar feeds all cancer. Learning about the lack of resources, knowledge, medical history within the black community um, really, first it startled me uh, because I was a part of that lack. I was a part of the people that didn't know my family medical history. I didn't learn about colon cancer and all the effects of it until I was diagnosed with it. All of that sparked this drive inside me to create a foundation that could help equip the black community and people of color and empower them with all the information that they needed to fight colon cancer so that they didn't have to die from it because it is preventable. And that led to the birth of Brown Sugar Rehab. Thank you so much for listening to my story. I really, 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 truly appreciate it. Let's go save some lives. <laughs>